You messed up. All right? You can make fun of Roblox. Okay, you, you can make fun of Minecraft. But don't make fun of Meta Groves. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be highlighting one of my favorite decks I've ever made. <laughs> it is Metagross GX with Duskmane Necrozma GX. Um, Duskmane Necrozma GX is a card that came out in the most recent set, the Ultra Prism. Um, it's an Ultra Beast, it's Solgaleo possessed by Necrozma. It has two really strong attacks, and then it has Claw Slash. Um, it's a Steel to Basic with 190 HP and Ultra Beast. As for three colorless energy, it does 60 damage, claw slash. For three metal and one colorless energy, it does 220 damage, where you discard three energy from this Pokemon. And for three regular steel energy cards, it's GX attack, Sun's Eclipse GX, does 250 damage. But you can only use this attack if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. So if you get something KO'd in the early game, say a Beldum, with a buzz hole or something active on your opponent's side, or any two prize attacker basically, you come back and you swing with Sun's Eclipse GX, and it basically leaves them unable to do anything for a turn, and then you attach another energy, and you Meteor Tempest, which gets you ahead four prize cards, which honestly happens quite consistently with this deck, which most people probably wouldn't believe. Um, the whole theory behind the deck is you have two, two to three Metagross in, act, in play, with the uh, Geotech system ability, which if you don't know, you could attach a Psychic or a Steel Energy card from your discard pile to your active Pokemon once per turn. So if you have three of these in play, you can do it three times. This discards three energy, you know, you just boop, 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 and hit them again. It also has Giga Hammer, which for two Steel and a Colorless does 150, where this Pokemon can't use Giga Hammer next turn. And then Algorithm GX, which is just a pretty strong GX, but N is very uh, popular at the moment. So using Algorithm GX is kind of like a last ditch hope, where if you know you're going to be behind, you have to use Algorithm, especially if your hand is bad, um, and you won't be able to use Sun's Eclipse for the rest of the game. But the last ditch, if you get it off, you basically win. If you don't get it off and you had a bad hand, which is most of the time when you'll use it, uh, you will just win the game. Or you'll just get ahead, potentially a new hand, new stuff to do, right? I run a 4-2-4 four, four line, 4 Beldum, 2 Batang, 4 Metagross, with 4 Rare Candies. So getting a Metagross out turn 2 is fairly consistent. Um, it's usually a turn 3 you have at least 2 Metagross in play. I played an entire game and only I didn't even get 1 Metagross, I'm still 1. Just because of the sheer power of Duskmane Necrozma. Um, I only run 2 Duskmane Necrozma, mostly because everything in the deck is an attacker. And you don't really need three. Uh, though sometimes I wish I had three. There are some changes I would prob I would make for sure to consistently have better, more Pokemon in play, just in case like, both of them were to get knocked out or I had to discard it to one early game, anything like that. The strongest card in this deck is by far the Stelmise card, with the Steel Worker ability, where your Steel Pokemon attacks do ten more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's, it's the Reggie Rock ability for Steel. It's not on an EX or a GX. It's resistant to fighting, and it does 70 damage for a uh, Psychic and two Colorless. It has 70 Psychic damage, which is very relevant at the moment. Um, the extra 10 damage, we'll talk about that first, is super relevant in almost every matchup. You know, if you have a Metagross in play, Giga Hammer, you attach one of the two choice bands you run to it, you're hitting 180. Um, a lot of GXs at the moment in play, including Duskmane and Cosmo, have 190. The extra 10 damage hits you that 190 and wins you the game, basically. Uh, if you're playing against a Galisapod and they use Armor Press, it puts them up to 230 health, the extra 10 damage, Meteor Temptus can kill the Galisapod. Uh, if you're starting against the Ralts, per se, you know, you want a Corby. You Corby, 10 damage, you one shot the Ralts. This extra 10 damage is super relevant, especially with Corona Impact as well. You have a choice band, 190, extra 10 damage, 200, that's all I can rock. Or an Espeon, Sylveon, blah blah blah. Sylveon's matchup, you kind of just win. You're playing Metagross, it beats Sylveon. Put a DC 
on anchor shot and you one shot a buzz hole or you don't put a DC on you one shot a mu EX or uh, what else is there other psychic weakness things buzz hole <laughs> Lucario you don't one shot unfortunately you'll need a core beam at first but that's just the nature of the stupid card <laughs> I run one of those, one Solgaleo Prism, and three Tapu Lele GX. I was going to run two, but turn one Bridget is super strong in this deck, one of the few decks I actually like Bridget in, because of the slow early game that you have, and you just have to accept there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so if you start Lele, if say you run two, right, you start Lele and you can turn one Bridget, you're going to turn one Bridget, putting two Leles more than most, most of the time on the bench leaving you without any Lele's for the rest of the game. Having three, if you start with one, you play one, you still have one more. And starting with Lele is very unlikely in this deck, but it's better to cover your bases than to not. Solgaleo Prism was a very clutch card for most of my matchups, or for like two matchups. Uh, it's probably the one card I would cut and replace it with say like a Rescue Stretcher, just to get more Dusk Mains in play consistently. Um, it's three retreat costs made it like the worst thing in the deck to start with just because you don't radiate to start early game because you're probably not going to have a lot of energy in your discard. Corona impact just takes too much energy early game and it's just impossible to retreat. Most of the time you'll Guzma it or they'll Guzma it for you. <laughs> it's it's really good the late game where say you don't have Metagross or you do have Metagross uh, but you need to set up two attackers otherwise you heat the KOZ turn after turn. Radiant Star, you set up two Dusk Mains or a Metagross and a Dusk Main. Uh, that's where Radiant Star comes in the most clutch. But I think I used it a total of like three times throughout the entire tournament, all nine rounds. So it's not, not the best card, but it's super strong. And it's, if it wasn't as strong as it was, it definitely wouldn't see play. I think it, or in this deck, I think it only, I only put it in this deck because of how swingy it can be. In terms of supporters, I ran 3 Cynthia, 3 Guzma, 3 Sycamore, 2 N, 2 Bridget, and a single Skyla. Skyla was super good almost every matchup that I used her, um, getting either a Heavy Ball, Candy, Stretcher, Field Blower, Max Potion, whatever I would need, right? A Candy. Bridget, a lot of the times, uh, one of them would be prized. So if you're going to run one, you're going to run two have to run two just in case it's prized, especially in a deck like this where you depend on it. Um, N, only two. Uh, Cynthia is just better in this deck, especially if you get ahead. You want to have as many cards in your hand as possible. You don't really care about interrupting your opponent's hand because most of the time when you're playing against a Zorark deck, you will win just because of the Meteor Temptist. Though, and ending them doesn't really do much because they can just trade away into more cards. So Cynthia is just a better card in, in that sense. But in other matchups, say like Magnazone or something like that, and would be better. And you save the ends basically for late game, which is what I did. Sycamore, super clutch, super good card. Um, just dumping your hand, drawing seven, is the best best draw supporter in the game by far. Uh, especially in this deck, you have stretchers, you have a bit of recovery. Most of the time, you're going to bench whatever you need and don't want to dump. And if you dump a Metagross, you can just stretch her it back, per se. Uh, yeah, Sigmar is just good. Guzma, obviously a super strong card. You need them in your deck, like two or three of them at least. Most, sometimes even four. Like I would run four if I could, but I don't want to. It would clunk up the deck too much. And then three Cynthia. Cynthia is just a good cycle card, you know, mid-game. You just want to cycle your hand, you know, you just play Cynthia, get new cards, do new things. Uh, the items I ran are uh, four candies, four ultra balls, pretty standard in like a stage two list. Ran a three max elixir, which nobody I think saw coming throughout my games. Everyone saw max elixir on Solgaleo and then saw Beldum and were like, "What are you doing? That's such a bad card." Max elixir is the card that makes Metagross good. It's Metagross struggles the most with energy acceleration. So if you if I have a way of accelerating energy early game onto a, a Beldum or even just uh, preferably onto the Duskmane, but even just onto a Beldum or a Lele, Max Elixir is just broken 
around 11 energy cards. So hitting the elixirs was pretty likely. So I'd miss it, obviously, as people do. But I'd hit it more than I would miss it, making it worthwhile in this deck. Um, it would get me ahead with just having energy on the field that I could discard with retreating and then geotech, or I can just put on the dusk main to attack, you know? Super strong card, uh, definitely holds the deck together. Without elixirs, this deck would be way too slow. Uh, it wouldn't be playable. But because of elixirs, it is playable, and it's really solid. Only ran two max potions. Probably would have ran three if I could, but against most of the matchups, you're going to max potion. Ooh, excuse me. Against most of the matchups, you're going to max potion. Uh, you're probably going to lose anyway, or you're going to win in a hard way. With Zorark Lucipod being a matchup you win. But Lucario being a matchup I lost twice. <laughs> they hit too hard on your um, on your Dusk Veins. They one shot your Dusk Veins with their first uh, Aura Sphere, Aura Strike, whatever it's called. And then if you if you hit them with a better gross, you lose because they'll GX you. Right? You need to kill them with a Dusk Mane. Or you lose. So Max Bosch, only two. Pretty solid inclusion. Field blower, only ran one. Uh, Garbatoxin wasn't very big at the tournament, even though two SP Garb lists topped, which was impressive. Didn't even match match up against a single ability lock kind of deck. So that was pretty nice. So I didn't, wasn't expecting it, so I only ran one. Paid off in the end. Rescue stretcher, only one. Would cut a prism for another rescue stretcher, uh, just to have more dusk mains in my deck basically, and get Metagross's back more consistently. Two of these probably makes the deck a lot better than what it already is. It also decreases the chance of starting with dusk with a uh, prism. So that's probably the only cut I'd ever make to this deck. If you really wanted to, you could cut the second stretcher for a second heavy ball. The two kind of go hand in hand. I like one heavy ball. Just because you're not going to heavy ball very often. Most of the time you're going to ultra ball as energy or whatever. Or just stretch it back from a discard, which I think is stronger. And yeah, I only ran one heavy ball. Ran two choice bands. Only two, mostly because it only ever gets attached to either a Metagross or, in rare occasions, a Delmise. You're basically never attaching a choice band to a Duskmate Necrozma. Because you can hit numbers with just the Delmise or just on its own, right? Metagross, on the other hand, needs the choice band to be relevant. There's no, no GX, or there's no card in the format that has 160 health that's like a threat, right? So having the 180, you can just kill a Lele or a Reggie Rock or whatever, and then the extra 10 damage, again, kills 190s, which is uber relevant in the current format. So that's why I only run two. Uh, I didn't use it very often. Like, it's not like it was a must-need, all you just attach, keep going, ran four of them. Unnecessary, but held the deck, made the deck stronger, just with the early game pressure, killing buzz holes and stuff like that. Even against ho -Oh, actually, this choice pattern makes your matchup just slightly more winnable. It's very unfavored in you regardless, but being able to hit the 190 against a ho -Oh and kill it potentially is super strong, and basically what the deck needs. And then energy count, 10 steel, and 1 psychic. Only ran 1 psychic, right? Only, literally only used for anchor shot. There's a couple of games, actually, I was really close to Tapu Curing GX, if the opponent made the play that I found to be optimal, but they didn't make the play that was optimal, so never really needed to Tapu Cure GX. It was always good to have that there as a backup plan, as well as being able to attack with anchor shot. It doesn't hinder the deck very much at all, because you only run one, so there's no chance of you having like two psychic energies on a dust main, where you could have one, and that's perfectly fine because you need three steel anyway. Same with Metagross, you know, you need even algorithm. But you can have two steel, one colorless, which will be the psychic, just kind of fills in the slot. All in all, deck works very well. Um, I love this deck, actually, it's probably my favorite deck I've ever made, as I said earlier. A lot of people seem to meme on it, think it's a really trashy deck. But against most of my matchups, I could, I would have won. Uh, I would have gotten top 64 
had I won my last game and we not gone to time. But since we went to time, me and the opponent just agreed to tie. Because uh, neither of us could take five prizes in one turn. Um, but yeah, I got one to top 128 at regionals, giving me 40 CP, I believe it is. And then I also got top 8 at a League Cup, only losing to ho o Kiawe, and not losing to anything else. So this deck's really strong, if you play it well. Um, it's definitely, you need a lot of practice to play. Uh, you need pra a lot of practice just to use the Metagross core. Like the Geotech is a lot harder to play than most people think. And with the Elixirs, uh, you need to time everything well. You need to have your deck memorized, basically. It's a really hard de deck to play, but it pays off heavily and immensely. Um, but yeah, people meme on this deck. Five people, I think, played it at Portland Regionals. I thought only me and some other dude, was some like young master, was playing it. But five people are playing it. I, w um, I wish I knew uh, what placement they came in because I want to see who f whose list finished top. Pro I'm confident it was mine but again I have no clue you know someone else could have done well or dropped who knows I want to find out if any of you guys know I would appreciate it. Um, but yeah this is the deck thank you guys for watching I'll, uh, be I'm working on some new counter meta decks at the moment but yeah until then I'll see you guys later take care.